First of four B20 sessions, the official G20 Dialogue Forum for Global Business Community SIDU in Northeast begins at City Convention Center in Infault with delegates from 23 nations. Hyatt College's students under Denimanjur University shut down the university administrative block demanding resignation of DM University Vice-Chancellor and Controller calling them inefficient. Union Minister of State for Education Dr. R.K. Ranjan says time to upgrade infrastructure of NIT Manipur to make it one of the best NITs in India. Speaker Tokum Satyabharata urges people of Maite community to stop criticizing each other but to jointly strive towards bringing inclusive growth and development. And according to annual status of the Education Report 2022, enrollment of students in government schools has increased but declined in private schools. Hello and welcome to Impact News for watching Primetime English Bulletin. I'm Kaunzam Shalira, bringing you the top stories and latest news at this hour. Business 20 Conference, which is the official G20 Dialogue Forum for Global Business Community, begins today at City Convention Center in Infault with delegates from 23 countries. Addressing the conference, Chief Minister Nautaman Birin highlighted the potential of Manipur in various sectors. He said road infrastructure is of top priority and road travel from Manipur to Bangkok within 16 to 18 hours to will be possible soon once the stretch of the Asian highway within Myanmar gets completed. He added that Northeast region has taken off as India's fastest growing region for air travel and Imphal International Airport is the third busiest airport in the region. And Birent also said plans are, are, foot to, are at foot to start international flight from Imphal to Mandli in Myanmar and Bangkok in Thailand. The Chief Minister asserted that to promote investment in the state, new industrial and investment promotion policy of Manipur has been adopted. State government is also considering setting up an investment promotion agency to facilitate investment and to promote ease of doing business. The Manipur Industrial Single Window Clearance Act 2021 was enacted. Berent maintained that Manipur also enjoys reliable and quality 24 by 7 power supply and to improve the quality, reliability and affordability power supply project for implementation of the Rampam distribution sector scheme is being taken up. He also said multilateral funding agencies are now coming forward to fund major projects in the state. Presently, four externally aided projects are under implementation in Manipur. He said Manipur has a strong base of qualified healthcare professionals and specialists and nurses from Manipur are in high demand across India. The Chief Minister highlighted the possibility of bringing medical tourism in the state on the backdrop of neighboring Myanmar presenting attractive business investment opportunities in the field. The Chief Minister said the B20 conference will present a great platform for the state to showcase its strength and opportunities of multilateral business partnership in various sectors. While highlighting the team of Vashudaivat Kutumbaka, One Earth, One Family, One Future, Chief Minister N. Biren said the conference will shape policies towards sustainable growth and development while assuring in peace and progress. He highlighted the significance of India's ACIS policy and Manipur as the state can act as the bridge between Southeast Asia and India. He also reiterated that Manipur, along with other northeastern states, will be India's new engine of growth. Irit representatives of respective students' union of five different colleges under the Namunzuri University shut down the administrative block of the university today, demanding resignation of DM University, Vice-Chancellor and Controller calling them inefficient. The Students' Union accused Vice-Chancellor and Controller of the University of negligence in their duties. Representatives of the Students' Union, along with a large number of college students, stormed the university premises and locked down the administrative block this morning at around 11. 
12 officers of the Imphal West District rushed to the scene and took stock of the situation to prevent any unwanted incident. Later, student protesters headed to the office of DMT University Vice Chancellor, chanting various slogans. Eventually, the matter subsided upon reaching an agreement between representatives of student unions and the representatives of the Vice Chancellor and DMQ. Union Minister of State for Education Dr. R.K. Ranjan says it is time to upgrade the infrastructure of the National Institute of Technology, NIT Manipur, to make it one of the best NITs in India. Mr. Minister Ranjan was speaking at the opening of two day long first international conference on science and technology and engineering hosted by NIT Manipur under the sponsorship of. NHIDCL, NIT Nagaland, NIT Arunachal Pradesh, NIT Silchar, Mastersoft, BRTF, NFR, Ishelvier, and Bank of Baroda. Minister Dr. R. K. Ranjit mentioned that NIT Manipur has produced good students who are now working in various reputed companies through, replace, uh, through placement provided by the institute. However, the institute still do not have hostel for both men and women, and above that, many faculties coming from outside the state have started abandoning the institute as they face issues of accommodation. He said director of the NIT Manipur and relevant authority are making all efforts to fill up the requirements in infrastructure. However, they are also facing problems in doing so due to financial constraint. Therefore, there is urgent need to provide the necessary infrastructure and quality faculty members so that the institute can produce quality students who can contribute in nation building. He also assured to nudge the ministry to take out necessary infrastructural project for NIT Manipur. Director of the NIT Nagaland, Dr. S. Venugopal, MD of the NHIDCL, Chantan Kumar, Director of the NIT Manipur, Professor Gautam Sutradar, delegates along with students attended the program. We are hoping for digital empowered nation and through that digital economy, we want to be the leader of the globe and for that this today's international conference is must, um, I, I think, such kind of international conference of sharing thoughts and innovation is must of, of, the, of this project age. In the education systems, we are providing skilling, reskilling and upskilling in collaboration or in conversation with all the premier institutions of the country and so that a complete and total revolution and structural revolution of our education system. Manipur Legislative Assembly Speaker Toksum Sate Brita stresses on the need for collective contributions in saving the diminishing the Maiti society. He called upon to stop criticizing one another but to jointly strive towards bringing inclusive development and growth. Toksum Sate Brita was speaking at the Maiti Student Meet organized by Maiti Student Association MSA today at Centenary Hall of Manipur University in Imphal. Speaking further, he mentioned that change is in inevitable and the mighty should feel proud of their identity. The speaker also appreciated MSF for providing a platform to bring all the mighties together and also underlined on working towards strengthening the community. Pijeta, Sakseta, Sankata, Tabalunda, Mayam Chatham Yutata, Kenabalakan, Hana Kenabalakasu, Hana Homulakasu, Live Home Dog, I made a mo in a mate, who in a dum own Belaxes, you know, all over to the Savon or the Yaraway. Nagarano, I made a mean, Pong, Tamu is a prop, Tapucha, one we are high on the Maduri Huna, Pamjerish, Maduri, Hunin the Playboy, you will do playing. Pana can no Jurusalaxu, Pana can no Silaxu, a Hoybukana, Mutatu Mahan Moy. Speaking on the event, Kero Emily Lorebam Ramesher Maiti expressed concern that Maiti community is becoming a minority and stress on the need of focusing on the current situation. 
He maintained that the Maiti community is residing only at the valley and the present situation of the community is more pathetic than the endangered Sangai. He encouraged the youth on learning to appreciate elected representatives when they do any good deeds. Emily Rameshwar also expressed concern that the future of the Maiti lies in the uncertainty in the wake of the increasing migrant influx in the state. Moirang Emily Tongam Santi, Wangkai Emily Tangzam Arun, Batsoi Emily Sapam Kunzakeshwar, CESD Manipur University Director CH Arun Kumar, along with representatives of various organizations and several students, attended the program. As a part of the event, students of Manipur University, Manipur Department of Manipur University, ICOMT Rabina was awarded with the title Laibok Pabha Chanu and Sapam Rahund of Teacher Education Department received the title Laibok Pabha Biba. <laughs> According to the survey report of the annual status of education report, as of 2022, enrollment of students in private schools in the state has declined and on the contrary, enrollment of students in government schools are increasing. As an associate of the Asar Manipur, Kaisham Kisan said during a program discussing Asar 2022 report and distribution of certificate to, to students of the Manipur University who participated in conducting the survey. Department of Education Manipur University and Asa Manipur jointly organized the program. Head of Department of Education Manipur University, Professor Premlata Maisnamt, Assistant Professor Dr. Carol Lind Ngailang Kangim, and Asa Manipur State Coordinator Yambem Chingshang also attended the event. Speaking on the occasion, Kisant underlined on strengthening right to education in the state and education department thoroughly discussing the Asa report to enhance education system in Manipur. Government school enrollment by four to five percent are hanged padona, the way to private school in a city, Karatatae, Aduga Maruin, Angangi learning status, Haita Reco Basic, we standard level to be text power, he visit Mapala, we younger Manipuna Yamla, Kura Funnelly, the Manipuyo in a deputy infrastructure, Haita RTZ, can hand improvement the Kata Aduga, new education policy, a mile and a Nipun Baratse, Kamina. 100% 2026 findings For the first time in Northeast region, Institute of Bioresources and Sustainable Development, IBSD Infault Society Fort, Ethnopharmacology, India and International Society for Ethnopharmacology, Switzerland will jointly organize International Bioresources Conclave and Ethnopharmacology Congress in the state. The Congress on the theme Reimagined Ethnopharmacology, Globalization of Traditional Medicine will be held at City Convention Center in Nepal from February 24 till 26. Speaking to media today at the conference hall of the IBSD in Takil, IBSD Director Professor Pugloki Mukherjee said that several scientists from 35 nations are taking part in the event and will discuss bioresource development and traditional medicine. He also informed that the Congress will also cover interaction with traditional healers in the state besides holding a series of lecture programs. Professor Pulotke Mukherjee expressed how that the coming event will help in showcasing the unique biodiversity of the state and also giving a platform to subject experts in sharing their ideas and opinions. Young researchers throughout the country and abroad, the global competition, they will be presenting their own research and out of that, five people will be selected for that. So that is another event will be there. So by that way, we want to make it interactive scientifically as well as participatory 
and so that we can have not many entrepreneurs developed out of the hearing from our own people that uh, how best the industrial setup can be developed, how best they can promote their own research, mainly our, to promote the bioresources and particularly when you talk about the traditional medicines, this is the drugs from our ancestors and drugs from the nature. That is the matter. Residents of Dampi Langol village on the Saigot constituency in Chuchampur district claimed they have not received any benefits under government schemes and project, including the food greens provided under NFSA. The village which got its recognition by government in 2016 have not received any benefits from government. Villagers drew the attention of the government to avail the benefits of the various schemes to them. The villagers were attending a bridge inauguration programmed in the village, a wooden plank bridge named Gangnamt Selkuni, built by villagers over Tulen Hul Stream. The bridge was inaugurated by President of KSO Samulantlam blocked Telen David Kwong. Speaking on the Ukiya sideline, one elder named Kai Pao Kong Sai said the culvert that existed over the stream was washed away by a flood that occurred on June 23, 2022, and villagers had faced lots of inconveniences ever since. The village, which is situated 13 kilometers from Chuchambo district headquarters along Rengkai Road, has 47 households and about 350 people. And the village lacks various necessities as there are not government offices or establishment nor any mobile network. The only source of livelihood comes from farming on hill slope. The elder, uh, the elder further urged government to build primary school, community hall, water supply scheme and primary health sub-center in the village. Government facility is Primary school is not a good thing. Primary subcenter is not a Network is not a good thing. Network is not a good thing. It 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 is not a People remember Dr. T. H. Gishant, Y. Tokent, and A. Razant on their 14th death anniversary today. Mapari Ningsingold Lut Manilt organized observance at Mapari Ningsingold near Uripok Chera Court complex. It may be recalled that Dr. T. H. Gishant, the then SDO of Kasom Kulent, and his two subordinate staff, namely Y. Tokent and A. Razant, were found murdered after abduction by NEC and IM on February 17, 2009. DMT University Vice Chancellor Professor and Raz Mohant, Manil Chairman as Dikend Resit and Environment and Climate Change Joint Director T. Brazakumar attended the observance. Kisanna, Makwe Ani Hanginabagi, Ingit Pirabasu, Makwe Anina, Karigi, Akwe, 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 Imung Dagi, Tobin Arakpa, Sargi Makada, Kwena, Tabuk Tozaduna, Hingzeri Basi, Karigi Damakta. I na sarbu thadok tu na kaido ngoi da aroi ba kongkong hawa koi sa saroi loi na tat patar di sariya na koi sa min na gani hai na liek ki ba ten ma koi gi lam dama tu gi miam do na hai ra pa wa kolon ma koi da sier li ba inot ma koi gi ta kiri ba i adu gi ma du gi atra miam du khan zera ga ngasi ai koi na asukum ba taramari su ba det ane ba shiri asi bang thuk sabani. Mother of Kayan Pai Bumped, Kayan Pai Bumped Nganba, who was killed by proscribed NRFM on the charge of selling drugs, seized claimed made by NRFF against her son are false. Kay Tombi Sana, mother of Kayan Pai Bumped Nganba, further added that her son supported the family by collecting sands and stones. She was speaking on the sideline of a protest held at Moirang Pulent, Puram Makong Bazaar against the killing of Kayan Pai Bum Tunganba, which was organized by local club and Mera Pai B. She further added that how can Nganba be involved in selling drugs when he barely managed to feed two meals to his family. It is a false allegation. Also speaking on the sideline, one of the Mera Pai B declared the allegation against Nganba as unjustified and also condemned the killing of Nganba. She also urged government and relevant authority to take necessary action to avoid such incidents and also to punish those who were involved in the killing of Nganba. She also urged government to provide means of livelihood to wives and children of lead Nganba. 
ai chadra ko lomba sana te sura no ma dung le boi sura ga chadra ni bani su chadra ni jira moina sira kanga sira kanga wang pang le le roi na boi na eta ba maran sira la pa jiri su ya ya ni dia na bo me chai te ge tiga la ga pi ba ma te bi u wa du ba ko di mo ram pe nda drug di on di te ge guli yo li hai ba ki ba ta nam ti ti chi chi ta na ta chi bi chi bi Mana yang cibu aku gigi yang biu karga, pola lom ni mili cici, pura do langa tadi mati tak kai tak kai kobo cici lele ke pola lom ni hai cici kai kina. Koi mo ngapu yang di cula no mo ke caja bani, adu umba lai te. Kampopi District Police has arrested five people in connection with illicit poppy cultivation. Arrested person now 45 years old, Pao Tang, son of Tang Lun, from Lung Zhang Village, 23 years old. Chung Tang Kong Sai, son of Sai Ngam Kong Sai from Tpi Mulding, 41 years old, Sai Ngin Hao Kip, son of Lat, Jam Kolon Hao Kip from Angkong Bung Village, 39 years old, Len Bao Kilong, son of Bao Hao Kilong from En Chal Zhang Village, and 30 years old, Sai Ko Hao Hao Kip, son of Bao Kai Hao Kip from Ti Lam Kang Jang Village. They were arrested by a team of Gamdong Sapermaina Police Station led by Gamdong Sapermaina Police Station OC Inspector Ludming Tang Kipgent under the supervision of Kampupi District SP T.H. Vikramzit yesterday. According to police, they were involved in illicit poppy plantation at Tingsert Village under the jurisdiction of Saikul Police Station. In Faltwist District Police Commander Team arrested two men with suspected 10 stopped cases of brown sugar weighing 114.6 grams yesterday. Arrested person are 33 years old Muhammad Amir Khan, son of Lat Muhammad Adul Karim from Lilong Lehao Kong in Tobal District and 42 years old Muhammad Mani Ridin, son of Lat Ali Mudin from Lilong Lomanga. Muhammad Abdul Karim was arrested at around 5.30 p.m. near Ima Pantwebi Community Hall in Samuro Owang Lekai, while Muhammad Menerudin was arrested in front of Darul Untlumt Madrasa in Lilong Turin Ahanbi. According to police, Muhammad Amir Khan confessed that he went to get brown sugar from Muhammad Manerudin and Muhammad Manerudin got it from 35 years old Lucky Mudin from Lilong Turin Ahanbi. Police also recovered one black color bazaar pulsar 150 with without any registration number, one blue color Honda Activa bearing registration number, MN06 SG0979, two mobile handsets, two wallets, two Aadhaar cards, two PAN cards, one driving license, one voter ID card and 180 black paper sheet used for making counterfeit notes from them. They have been handed over to Wangui Police Station OC along with the seized item for necessary legal actions. District Magistrate Tawalt District today notified and urged all armed license holders in Tawalt District to submit necessary documents to nearest police station for the purpose of re-verification of armed license and armed registration. Now it's time for a small commercial break. After the break, we bring you news on Tonao Zamstri La Luang representing Manipur at 59th Femina Miss India 2023. Keep watching Impact News. Lengshin Bido, Lengshin Bido, not a the labor my park with dental clinic the Anangamadi Ahangi Makal Makaka Yagi Yagi problems they are lying jerry. Amadi Anangi treatment give them a canon thirty percent discount to Pijari. A Kupamaro give them a Akogi contact number nine three six six four seven eight seven one eight the Pau Hovido. Presto personalized wonders. In fall, the Nauna Hangdok Cherry, Heidi Basida, personalized gifts, corporate gifts, awards and mementos, home decor, office rubber stamp, Nasing Ba, Potlam Sing, Mapa Masida Pangigani, Nasi Maglangsing Birau, Tilagras Enterprises, Presto, Tangal Bazaar, near Kasturi Tong, in fall. Contact number 0385-244-9025 Natraga 9862100456. Welcome back after the break watching Primetime English Bulletin. 
Thaunazam's trailer Luang will represent Manipur in the 59th Femina Mist India 2023. Out of the six contestants from Manipur who auditioned from Femina Miss India contest, Strela has been selected. Thaunazam's trailer Luang has won the Miss Manipur title in 2017. 30 contestants from all across the country will compete for the coveted title this year. Manipur will host the final round of 59th Miss Femina Miss India, which is scheduled in April this year. Scholarships sponsored by Seoult, South Korea-based Sinhan Financial Group Hub Foundation were distributed to 15 students of the Department of Foreign Language, Manipur University, who had secured high marks in Korean language subject today. Department of Foreign Language of Manipur University organized the event. It may be mentioned that Manipur University introduced Department of Korean Language for undergraduate course in 2021, followed by uh, introduction of five-year integrated Korean MA course the same year. Meritorious students have been receiving the scholarship since 2021. Currently, around 80 students are pursuing Korean language as major subject at Manipur University. Actually, the Shinhan Bank is uh, the most leading bank in South Korea. They are choosing the seven countries to give uh, the international scholarship to the students for encouraging of learning Korean language. So among them, India is uh, selected. And then among India, and then Manipur University were select, was selected uh, for distributing the scholarship. Every year, we are selecting the 15 students who got the very high marks in their studies. This year, we got the uh, 3.2 lakhs from the Shinhan Bank, and we selected the 15 students, and the 5 students from the BA second year, and uh, 10 students from the BA third year. For the long night, Maharaj Kumar Priya Bharata Singh Memorial to Art Exhibition kicks off at State Art Gallery in Palace Compound in Fall today. The exhibition is being jointly organized by Art Society Manipur and Manipur Cultural Integration Conference. National Lalit Kala Academy awardee Twiding Zam Tombi, President of the Manipur Cultural Integration Conference, Abraza Kumar Sharma and President of the Art Society Manipur, the H. Devender graced the opening program as Chief Kiss, Guest of the Honor and President respectively. Speaking on the occasion, National Lalit Kala Academy awardee Twiding Zam Tombi lauded the immense role of Maharaj Kumar Priyabharata in the field of the art. For this year, Maharaj Kumar Priyabharata Singh Memorial to Art 2000 Award 2023 was presented to Ring Chwinghamt Simpri from the artwork titled Still Life. And honorable mention was presented to Soibamt Karungan Bamaite for his work The Two Men. A total of 47 arts works including sculpture, graphic, drawing and painting are displayed in the exhibition. Ganapriya Women's College in Fall today observed its 58th Foundation Day program. Meritorious students, including subject toppers for the year 2020 and 2022, were also felicitated during the program, which was held at Central Hall of the College. Principal of GP Women's College, H. Dev Sankar Sarma, Dean of the School of Social Science, Denimanzari University, Professor Ras Kumari Tampasana, and HOD of the Physics Department of GP Women College and Vice President of Student Union, Dr. Moisnant Bridia Sagart, attended the program. Speaking on the occasion, Principal of GP Women's College, H. Dev Sankar Sarma, expressed pride over achievement of the college in producing successful students who are excelling in various fields. Floral tribute were paid to a statue of its founder, Ganapriya, and to the photo of her son, H. Dizumani Dev Sarma, on the occasion. Awards and citations were also presented to University Topper, College Topper, and Subject Topper for the year 2020 and 2022. Retired teachers, along with teaching and non teaching staffs and students, attended the program.
Special Task Force under campaigned for a national integration of the proscribed alliance for socialist unity Kanglai Park Asuk warns people to refrain from unwanted activities during Class 10, 11th and 12th examination conducted by CBEC, BOSIM and COSIM. The proscribed outfit imposes curfew within 200 meters diameter of all examination centers. Press release signed by a uh, special tax force, Commander Deepak also warns examination investigators and students not to cheat and encourages council board flying squad members to expel the violating students. It also warned of stern action against question paper leaks on social media. Third HSLCE state level mega mock test organized by JECI Coaching Institute New Jagont was held today. Over 800 students from across the state appeared to mock test in three examination centers in Bisnupur and Imphal. The mock test will continue till February 27. JCCI Coaching Institute coordinator Ifam Asif said that the mock test aimed to boost conference. Confidence among students who are appearing for Class 10 examination and HSLC examination conducted by Board of Secondary Education, Manipur. Manipur Public Service Commission today notified that those candidates whose name appeared among the rejected application list can't make their appeal till February 21 by meeting the examination controller in the MPSC office. MPSC had released reject list for some applicants who had applied for Manipur Civil Services Combined Competitive Preliminary Examination 2022. One day training comes awareness program on the right to information RTI Act 2005 was held at the conference hall of DC office, Chandal District. The program was organized by Manipur Information Commission and District Administration, Chandal with an aim to with a main objective to keep a check on misusing Revolutionary Act and in view of the increasing number of RTI applications and RTI activities in various districts of Manipur. Manipur Information Commission state Chief Information Commissioner Oinam Sunil talk on RTI versus RTP right to privacy and its present trends in the country. Chandal Deputy Commissioner Mayang Lamont Ras Kumar elaborated on problems and issues faced by the S SPIO's public authorities while implementing the RTI Act 2005 and Deputy Register Judicial announcing stress on rules of SPIO's in implementation of the RTI Act 2005 during the event. Popular Youth Club Kangabok along with Village Development Organization Kangabok organized a felicitation program for residents of Kangabok who had received a word for the state and district from Nehru Yuva Kendra, NYK, Sangathan Manipur and the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports. Pradant and members of Kangabok Jilla Parishat along with locals attended the program. Three-day training program on organic farming, organic input and techniques kick-started today at College of Agriculture of Central Agricultural University, CAU Infall. The training program is organized by Multi-Technology Testing Center and Vocational Training Center, College of Agriculture and sponsored by Manipur Organic Mission Agency MoMA, Department of Horticulture and Soil Conservation. The program is being conducted with an objective to help realize transforming Manipur as an organic state. MoMA Project Director K. Dev Tata, Dean of College of Agriculture, Professor S. Indira and Professor L. Nabachandra, Department of Agronomy, College of Agriculture, Crest Opening Event. Department of the Anthropology, Manipur University, Kanchipur organized an outreach program on reaching people. The program was held in connection with World Anthropology Day. The event was conducted at Langtabal Chingtak Gobi Village, which is adopted by Department of the Anthropology, Manipur University.
As part of the ongoing agitation by Coalition Against Drugs and Alcohol Qatar and other organizations to roll back Cabinet's decision to legalize alcohol in a state, a sit-in was organized by all Manipur Women's Social Reformation and Development Samas, Nupi Samas, Kada Apunba Manipur Kanba Imar Lop Amkil, and Sakut Thaurang Apunba Nupi Lop Yumnam Kuidrong Makhalekai at Yumnam Kuidrong Makhalekai Community Hall. Another sit-in was also held at Hekruzum Tamayi Lekai. It was organized by All Manipur Women's Social Reformation and Development Samas Nupi Samas, Kada and Haikruzum Tmaya Lekai Nungzil Klaima Nupi Tlo. The protesters demanded government to withdraw cabinet decision to legalize alcohol. Jalian Grant Civil Organization ZCO observed 30th death anniversary of freedom fighter Rani Guiding Glow at the office of Jalian Grant Youth Front in Imphal. The press not released by Jalian Grant about the further stated that volunteers of Jalian Grant Civil Organizations attended the program. Now the sports news. Third Governor's Mukna Kangji Trophy 2023 kicks off at Ima Laikulembi Ground in Krai Kompal, Sazor Lekai today. The tournament is being organized by Krida Bharati Manipur and All Manipur Mukna Association and it will continue till 19 February. The tournament for the Indigenous Games was first started by former Union Minister and Prabhasri Thaunazam Sauba. In the first match of the tournament, Infalt West District defeated Kaching District by 7 goals to 6 in the closely contested match. Thawal District will take on Bishnubu District in the next match tomorrow. Sagolbant United have entered quarterfinal of 13 Sahid Manoranjan Singh Memorial CRPL state level football tournament being played at artificial turf ground inside Sport Complex Tail Part. On the road to quarterfinal, Sagolbant United defeated KSC Kampopi 2 1. Basanta and Lansing scored a goal each for Sagolbant United, while Thaukoland of KSC Kampopi scored a goal. Poloi FC Chingaral Tespur will clash with football four chains FC Saikul in the next match tomorrow. In 7th MNCA, W. Plara Pralada and W. Ramananda Elite Tournament being played at Luang Popa Cricket Stadium, Model Club Chingamaka defeated Alt Amin Lilong by 54 runs. Electing to bat first, Model Club Chingamaka met 260 runs in the given 40 overs by losing 7 wickets. Bipin Kumar Lampuk Lapumt and TH Deepak met 60 runs and 43 runs respectively in the innings. In reply, Al Amin Lilong were about out for 162 runs in 35.1 overs, thus losing the match by 54 runs. Model Club Chingamaka's baller Sunil Salam picked up seven wickets and was declared the man of the match. Blue Hawk Kurai will take on Cyclone Tawibant in the next match tomorrow. Manipur A India team easily defeated PA India team by 10 0 today in the fifth league match of the sixth women's international polo tournament at Mapal Kangjebung in fall. For Manipur A team, A India team KH DFT and M Priya scored three goals each, KH Habe scored two goals, while Wild Razinta and Lucy scored one goal each for the team. On the other hand, in the sixth league, sixth league match of the tournament, South Africa team Tres Manipur B team, India team 7-2. South Africa's Michelle Grace scored three goals, Sarah Maxont and Alida Brenda scored two goals each to win the match. Tihe Sanazawi and Nilu Raskumari of Manipur B India team scored one goal each for the team. Luzengbok team will play Manipur A team India teamed in the 7th league match and Manipur B India team will play against IPA India team in the 8th league match tomorrow in the tournament being organized by All Manipur Polo Association under the aegis of Department of Tourism Manipur, Government of India.
Before we end, let's look, uh, let's look at the headlines once again. First of four B20 sessions, the official G20 Dialogue Forum for Global Business Community Cities in Northeast begins at City Convention Center and in part with delegates from 23 nations. Ayat College students under Dhanamanjuri University shut down the university administrative block demanding resignation of DM University, Vice Chancellor and Controller calling them in Everson. Union Minister of State for Education Dr. R.K. Ranjan says time to upgrade infrastructure of NIT Manipur to make it one of the best NITs in Nepal. Speaker Thoksum Satyabrata urges people of Maiti community to stop criticizing each other but to jointly strive towards bringing inclusive growth and development. And according to annual status of the Education Report 2022, the enrollment of students in government schools has increased but declined in private schools. That's all we have to in this bulletin. Thank you for being with us. Coming up next is Prime Time Manipur Bulletin. For more news, you can follow Impact TV on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Have a great evening and stay safe. Shri Shri Gaur Chandraya Namaha. Purbashram day khoi gi rakta tin biramba. Ekhoi puna makki. Waikhom nabakumar shinghana. Magi nung si jaraba imung manung. Sagay natay marupmapa.